It's left devastated by deadly tornadoes. Now, individuals and organizations coming together to help rebuild. How you can help this noon. Some pieces by local artists inspired by a Latin American cultural icon. We take a closer look at this exhibit coming up. Live from KSAT 12, the news at noon starts right now. San Antonio police trying to work out the details of a death alongside a far east side highway. That's right, a street cleaning crew discovering what was left of a person's body early this morning. All this happening on the eastbound access road of I-10 near Foster Road. Katrina Weber has the story from the scene and she tells us police are investigating it as a deadly hit and run crash. Looking out at this access road, there's really no sign of what happened here overnight. But according to San Antonio police, members of a street sweeping crew got a gruesome eyeful as they went about doing their jobs. Police say the street sweepers called them to the eastbound access road of Interstate 10 near Foster Road around 4 this morning. They found what best can be described as a mutilated body all across the roadway. Police believe that person was hit by several large vehicles, trucks and or cars that didn't stop. The body was so badly damaged that police couldn't even determine the gender. Officers blocked off the access road and the Foster Road exit ramp for hours while traffic investigators went through the scene looking for evidence. The workers could only stand by, seemingly in shock from what they found. Police say they really don't know anything much about the crash itself, including when it happened or who might have been responsible. Reporting from the Far East Side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. We have new details this noon in a shooting investigation on the city's east, northeast side. Police now say that they're looking for multiple suspects. Officers tell us that early this morning, a group of people were gathered in the 4800 block of Rayvon Drive. That's near Ritterman and Loop 410. At some point, an argument broke out and eventually it escalated. Then someone pulled out a gun. Police say the victim was shot and taken to the hospital with life threatening injuries. Officers searched the area, but they did not find the suspects. Well, according to the San Antonio COVID dashboard, the risk here locally in San Antonio is mild, but doctors around the country are seeing rises in COVID cases and we know there have already been reported cases of the Omicron variant locally. Just a little more than 64% of the total population of Bear County is fully vaccinated, but a much smaller number has their booster shot. We spoke with Dr. Jason Bowling, a local leader in epidemiology, about the importance of that booster. Each shot that you get with the vaccine series increases the amount of antibodies that your immune system sends to fight off the virus. So if you get exposed, reduces your chance of getting infected. If you do get infected with these breakthrough infections that you hear about, it gives you a better chance of having really mild symptoms. If you are interested in getting a booster shot, Wonderland of the Americas is open for walk-in. Scheduling is not necessary. Just remember to bring your vaccination card. If you get the Pfizer shot, you do have to wait six months until after your second dose. Sadly, we want to head over to America's heartland where President Biden touring the disaster area and visiting some of the communities that were hit hard by powerful tornadoes. That's right. At least 88 people dead across five states. And as ABC's Arena Roy reports, at least 24,000 people still without power. And that is just in Kentucky. President Biden visiting America's heartland to meet with tornado victims in Kentucky face to face, listening to their needs while seeing the devastation firsthand. The nation's deadliest tornado outbreak in more than a decade, dozens killed across the state, victims as young as two months old. Oakland Coon's parents taking her off life support on Monday. I'm going to miss her crying in the middle of the night, waking me up. I'm going to miss her, you know, not wanting to be put down wanting our daddy and mommy to hold her. The governor of Kentucky expecting the death toll to climb with more than 100 still unaccounted for. I still expect that we will find at least some more bodies. There is just uh, so much destruction. That destruction leaving thousands without power. So many still can't believe they survived. I was scared and I just knew I was going to die. Hundreds of people were injured in the tornadoes, many of them children. Nurses Debbie Hammontree and Lisa Pyle on duty when four brothers came in, all under 10 years old, needing treatments for cuts and broken bones. You can still hear their, their cries, their screams when you're you know, taking care of them. 
Now this will all of course take a very long time to first clean up and then rebuild. And now there is the threat of yet another storm system moving through the US with heavy rain expected in some already hard hit areas. Rena Roy, ABC News, Mayfield, Kentucky. And happening right this minute, our KSAC community phone bank with the American Red Cross. The organization wants to help people recover from this disaster. So if you're in a position to make a donation, the phone number to call, it's on your screen right now. It is 210-351-1363. We do have people standing by. And coming up a little bit later in the show, I will check in with the Red Cross at the phone bank. We're going to hear what your donation could mean to the people that were hit in those communities. Well, a nonprofit arts organization began celebrating Our Lady of Guadalupe 26 years ago, and this year its art exhibit continues with pieces by San Antonio artists. Tiffany Huertas takes us behind the scenes of the exhibit and what it means to have it in San Antonio, helping visitors explore the significance of the Latin American cultural icon. She's a religious icon in Mexico. She appeared to Juan Diego, uh, but in the United States and in our uh, Mexican-American communities, she's a secular icon. She's a source of inspiration uh, for protection, comfort. Colorful paintings and artwork fill the Centro Cultural Atzlan Gallery for the 26th annual Celebración a la Virgen de Guadalupe. Our mission is to promote, maintain, and develop Chicano, Latino, and indigenous art and culture. The exhibit opened on Sunday, December 12th. I believe that through the interpretation of the artist, her image has grown and filtered through many communities and throughout the United States and around the world. This exhibit is so beautiful. It includes Virgen de Guadalupe inspired sculptures and different paintings. And check out this art installation by local floral designer, Henry de Leon. The artists have pretty much flexibility of how they interpret. The exhibit is free and open to the public from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. today and tomorrow and will reopen from January 3rd through the 13th. Many Mexican Americans that are Catholics here in San Antonio believe she's very she's a very breathing, living icon for them. So when we present her, we present her in a very reverent way, a uh, very respectful way. Tiffany Huertas, Case at 12 News. And this morning, some shelter pets got uh, to enjoy a holiday feast. And guess who showed up? Old Saint Nick himself, Santa Claus, helped to feed the dogs and cats at the Humane Society today. This was part of the sixth annual holiday dinner. This food was courtesy of Potterosa Ranch. It included roasted turkey, mashed potatoes, and even some dessert. And the pets didn't just chow down. They also got to open gifts. Yeah, they got gifts. Many of the dogs and cats uh, are available for adoption. All you have to do is contact the Humane Society. This guy's up for adoption. Oh, yeah. Come on, you need a dog. Hmm. No comment, huh? No comment. Apartment living. No space for a dog. No. Very warm temperatures next few days, as we know, but the changes come this weekend. Still some rain chances, especially as we get into Saturday and even some chances on Sunday. Another look at that weekend forecast is coming up. And as of recent, the Spurs have been raining down threes. See how the Spurs organization, some select players, that one in particular, making a big contribution to our local community. It has only been a few days since a deadly tornado outbreak hit Kentucky and surrounding states. Some people left without heat, water, or electricity, or a roof over their head. Basic needs are essential as communities are working to pick up the pieces. There's one organization, it's always there, it always aims to provide help, the American Red Cross. That's why we're holding a KSAT community phone bank. It's happening right now. And we are joined by a representative from the Red Cross, Jeremy here. There are people, lots of people, who have nowhere to go right now. Completely, I completely agree with that. Um, the Red Cross is, is, understands that we're deeply saddened by the idea that all these people have lost their homes, you know, lost their communities, and we're doing everything we can to support them. Um, let me look actually at the details right now. It says that on Monday night, uh, there are 16 emergency shelters opened up in Kentucky, Tennessee, Arkansas, and providing refuge for about 280 people. So we're doing everything we can to support people in need, offering food and shelter. 
And some of these people have lost loved ones too. They so have. they're in need of counseling services. Correct. And all, what are the things that people need right now? So the first thing they need is the basic amenities, which is food and shelter. They need to understand that they're safe and in a safe environment. After that, then we offer counseling services. We'll be there on site to be able to talk to people, you know, help them out with what they need and, and be able to provide them the services they need to be able to get on with their life. A lot of people uh, want to give, but they want to make sure that their dollars sure. are indeed going to this disaster, not to administrative services here in San Antonio. Are, can we, you assure people of that? Absolutely. So when it comes to disaster relief and disaster funding, you have to understand that this money that you give today will go directly to those in need. And it's something as simple as $20 will actually give breakfast, lunch, and dinner to a single individual. Something as little as $50 will give a full, uh, full meal for the full day, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and shelter. And if you're able to give $200, that'll feed a family of four and provide shelter for that family of four. It seems as though the Red Cross can do more with a dollar. Yes. Your dollar donated than if you donated the food itself. Absolutely. Right now, we are not accepting food and accepting other things. Um, we're not accepting blankets and so on. Really, what we'd like to do is offer the opportunity for you to, um, to donate with funds. And with that, we have people deployed on site who will be able to administer those funds and uh, use those to buy services. And here's a little tip. This is something I've learned. Sure. It's Christmas time. There are people in your life like Justin Horn that are very difficult to buy Christmas gifts for. He's over there <laughs> saying, who, me? Yeah, you. This is a great way to give a Christmas gift by making a donation Absolutely. in the name and in the honor of a friend that you just can't find the right thing to buy for. Absolutely, and, and the thing is we're open to any type of um, generous gift that somebody may be willing to give and also to give that gift in, in honor of a friend. Right. Well, the phone number is on your screen right now. It is 210-351-1363. The Red Cross Tornado Relief Phone Bank is open right now. It's going to be open all the way till 7 o'clock right. tonight. Um, are people who are at the phone bank, Jeremy, are they able to answer basic questions about um, what's happened, with, where the money is going and so forth. So if you have questions, you Absolutely. can call that Absolutely, and this is why I'm holding this documentation to make sure that we get the latest updates on exactly what's happening and where those funds are going. We also accept calls in both English and Spanish. Excellent, all right, and all of that information is at the fingertip of the phone Absolutely, bank folks. Absolutely, yes. All right, so here you go. There's the phone number to call, 210-351-1363. Normally we're in the phone bank, Jeremy, so we can hear the phones ringing. Obviously we're in the studio today, but please let's make those phones get loud all afternoon and into the evening. And if you know somebody who hasn't finished their Christmas shopping, here's a good way. A good place to send them, 210-351-1363. All right, we'll be checking back in with Jeremy at 1230 as well. But for now, taking a live look out of the Alamo City, 75 degrees. Justin Horn, not exactly feeling like Christmas out there. Not at all. Uh, we started off still both the school right around 70 degrees. And so, uh, bear with probably up near 80 or so. Right now we're in the mid 70s. So let's take a look at the aquifer. It is uh, sitting even at 663.2. It has moved today. The average is 668.3. So we are a little bit below average. As far as pollen count goes, mountain cedar is in the high category. It's at 4,690. I'll warn you there, it jumped up today. Molds are low at 280. We do have an approaching storm system. A lot of weather going on across the country today. We'll show you that coming up. Welcome back. 1218 this Wednesday afternoon. So you made fun of Justin saying that he's one of the more difficult people to buy Christmas gifts for. But oh, doesn't everybody have somebody like that? They have everything in the world. I mean, Justin has been blessed oh. <laughs> with good looks. Great job, oh, great wow. family, cute kids. This, this shifted very quickly. I'm feeling to very good about myself yeah. right now. Uh, thank you very much. But I mean, what, you know, it, honestly, there are people in our lives like that that sure. we, we're just stymied. We don't know what mm. to do. Sure. But well, you you gave uh, a great example of what you can do there, uh, donating. Uh, that's, <laughs> that's a possibility. I made you blush. Yeah, a little bit. All that's right. good. Let's jump into uh, some records here. We're, we're going to be setting some records today. 69 was the low this morning. 64 is the record warm low. 
that year that was set in the year of 1933. So we're going to break that record unless we get below 64 by midnight, which we won't. 67 uh, in Del Rio this morning. Record warm low there is 61. That was set back in 1948. So I think those records will go down today. We may not hit the record high this afternoon, but we're breaking the record warm lows. Uh, just getting off to a very, very warm start. Looking at its radar right now, we do have a couple showers I want to point out. Uh, one here in Wilson County that's moving north. A little shower that's going to track north towards uh, maybe the Lavernia area or just to the west of Lavernia. A couple more showers down towards Carn City and Kennedy and around Victoria. These are all pretty light. We've seen a sprinkle or two here in San Antonio, but not really looking for much. Uh, here today, it's going to if we're going to see anything, it's going to be a very quick moving light shower. Take a look at the time lapse. We've had clouds come through. Now we didn't get any fog this morning. Winds were just a little bit too strong and you can see a couple of droplets there on the screen. And now we're starting to see some breaks in the clouds. That means it's going to be an awful warm day. 76 already. If we do get some sun, uh, we'll get up to around 80 degrees or so. Southerly winds at around 11 miles per hour right now. Dew point is at 68, so it is very, very humid. Looking at the uh, satellite picture here, you can see all the clouds, but there are breaks. We've got some high clouds over top of those morning low clouds. So we'll call it mostly cloudy, but don't be surprised if you do see some sun. And where we are seeing the sun temperatures all the way up to 83 now in Catula, 79, Gonzales, 79 in Austin, 73, Fredericksburg, and two points close to 70. This is just not December like at all. Uh, that is almost close to the oppressive category. This is what we would see maybe spring and summer, but not in December. Forecast for today takes us up close to 80. Temperatures don't fall off much tonight, so just like yesterday morning, we'll see uh, a, a warm start. Take a look at the wind gusts across the state. Now, this isn't reporting, but it was a few minutes ago, and it showed a wind gust up over 60 miles per hour in Amarillo. Gusts to 46 in San Angelo. Our gusts are somewhere in the range of 20 to 25, so we're not seeing as strong of winds as they're seeing to the north. But some of these wind gusts have been impressive. In Pueblo, Colorado, just last hour, they had a wind gust of 91 miles per hour. So there's a lot of strong wind across the middle part of the country. High wind warnings stretch from New Mexico all the way up to the Great Lakes. And then there's winter weather advisories behind that. So behind this is a storm system that's creating all of this. And uh, it'll be moving across the country. It'll push a front into North Texas, but not through. There's a, a, another system, though, behind that that will push a cold front through. And that is scheduled for Saturday morning. And that will bring in some cold air for us. As we look at the temperatures, some colder air is trying to spill down now behind the system. It's 6 in Cut Bank, 22 in Casper. But out ahead of it, you're getting a lot of warm air. Places like Chicago sitting at 63, that's warm for them and uh, warm for the eastern half of the country. Future cash shows that first front stays up across North Texas. Here comes that second front. It'll be here by Saturday morning. Line of showers and storms comes through San Antonio early in the day on Saturday. I think we get a little bit of a break Saturday afternoon and then more upper level energy moves in on Sunday. It'll be chilly and it'll be wet on Sunday. It looks uh, with some showers and then everything moves out early on Monday morning. So 80 next several days, and then we drop into the 50s with that front on Saturday. 60% chance of morning showers and storms, 40% chance of showers on Sunday, 52. And then we moderate again next week back into the 60s and probably eventually 70s, guys. All right, Justin, thank you. Justin Horn. All right, we're talking about Christmas. What about Santa Claus? Keldon Johnson acting as Santa for so many kids in and around our community. That story and so much more on the Spurs in just a bit. We are also talking about those road runners. Meet, meet, birds up. What a season for, oh, Sincere McCormick and all of the squad. A preview of the Bull. That's next. All right, game day for the San Antonio Spurs. Team finishing up their five-game homestand. Taking on the Charlotte Hornets, but... Not Keldon Johnson after giving $1,000 each to five families for a Christmas shopping spree at Academy Sports and Outdoors on Monday. The Spurs forward was at it again just yesterday. This time, the Olympic gold medalist suited up as Santa Claus, surprising 15 families on the city's west side, spreading Christmas cheer, giving out gifts, and of course, San Antonio Spurs tickets. Keldon and his teammates had a tour of the west side before the season tipped off, and now he's helping make the holidays a little brighter at the Cassiano Homes. A blessing to be here, you know, a blessing to be able to, to help some families out and, you know, see their reactions. Uh, we just had a kid and, like, 
uh, when when he seen the gifts and seen everything that came with it, he's his jaw kind of dropped like he was shot. And you know, that kind of really like things like little things like that really make my day. And you know, glad to see other people happy. Making such a good impact on the community. But speaking of the Spurs, tip off tonight, 7:30 here at home, AT&T Center, taking on the Hornets. Right now, Spurs sitting at 10 and 16. Got to get that win streak up. Speaking of a win streak, one of the best win streaks we've seen in college football, UTSA. UTSA head coach Jeff Trailer resuming practices for the Tropical Smoothie Cafe Frisco Bowl. It's less than a week away. In the meantime, Jeff Trailer has been out on the recruiting trail. That's because today is early National Signing Day in college football. Trailer says he has 12 commits with another eight in play and would like to have 16 to 20 signed up by February. Traveling around with the Conference USA Trophy certainly not really hurting the recruiting efforts. That and a 12 and one record. It's the heavy trophy. I'm, I mean, it, it wore me out. Uh, so that was a little surprising how heavy that rascal is. Uh, I don't know. I'll let you know Wednesday. Uh, if we get those guys, I guess it was good. And if we don't, I guess it didn't matter. Well, the Roadrunners are a two and a half point favorite in the Frisco Bowl, taking on San Diego State Aztecs. That's even though they won their conference title 49 41 over Western Kentucky. Meanwhile, San Diego State lost their conference championship to Utah State. And they lost big. They lost 46 13. Now the Roadrunners have a chance to end their remarkable season with their first bowl victory. We're not done yet. Uh, we know that we have to, to go out to next Q. It's going to be a great game, great atmosphere. Um, they're coming out, you know, they're hungry. They're a great team. Um, you know, we did get the conference championship. That means a lot to us. Um, but we still have a game ahead of us. So we're not looking back. We're looking forward. Um, so we got to go out there and cheat that. All right, so the Tropical Smoothie Cafe Frisco Bowl, San Diego State, 11-2, and UTSA, remember, 12-1. Come on, it is Tuesday, December 21st, 630, and over there in Frisco. Very cool. There you go. Can I get one of these? Yeah, beep, beep. Meet, meet. Mm -hmm. Can I get one? No. There we go. Yeah, absolutely. We got it. After getting a financial boost from the government during the pandemic, airline CEOs are now in the hot seat. Why Congress is questioning them about the money and why how it was spent. It's after the break. The House voted to hold former Trump Chief of Staff Mark Meadows in contempt of Congress. It's for defying a subpoena. He refused to testify before the House committee investigating the January 6th attack. Meadows says he can't speak to the committee because former President Donald Trump has asked him to keep everything confidential. He did, however, turn over some 9,000 documents, including emails and text messages, those messages pleading for Meadows to get Trump to stop the violence. Some lawmakers accuse Meadows of hiding the truth, while Trump ally Jim Jordan condemned the vote as an attack on the presidency itself. Today they are destroying executive privilege. If you are making excuses to avoid cooperating with our investigation, you are making excuses to hide the truth from the American people about what happened on January 6th. Criminal contempt of Congress carries a maximum penalty of a year in prison. The Justice Department would have to decide whether it would prosecute. It has not generally in the past. So far, no word on whether that will happen. Well, the CEOs of major airlines testifying before Congress today on Capitol Hill with passengers left stranded after hundreds, even thousands of flights were canceled. Lawmakers want to know how airline CEOs spent a $54 billion Bailout. So in prepared remarks, American Airlines CEO Doug Parker will tell Congress the payroll support program saved the airline industry, providing a lifeline for their workers. Airlines say they hired and retrained tens of thousands of employees. Critics say major airlines should have done better with that lifeline. The Omicron variant of COVID-19 will likely become the dominant strain in the U.S. That's according to Dr. Anthony Fauci. Meanwhile, the World Health Organization cautions that even if this variant is more mild than Delta or other previous strains, the sheer volume of cases could overwhelm health care services in some communities. We're already seeing Omicron variants spread quickly in some parts of the country. Cornell University in Ithaca, New York, shut down its campus and moved all the finals online. This comes after more than 900 students tested positive for COVID. University officials say a very high percentage of those people do have this variant. All right, well, back here at home, 75 degrees out. 
We've talked about Christmas a lot this afternoon. It doesn't feel like it out there, though, Justin Horn. Not at all. Not in the least bit. Uh, we, we started off warm this morning. It's going to be warm this afternoon. We've had a warm stretch here. We'll get a brief cool down this weekend, and I would love to tell you that as we head towards Christmas, it looks like things are going to get cold again, but it doesn't look that way. And you look at the numbers right now, we're sitting in the mid 70s, even some 80s already showing up in places like uh, Stinson down towards Pleasanton. And I think we're going to see quite a few 80s on the map today and enough humidity out there where we could actually be talking about a heat index in the middle of December. No fun. Uh, one to pass this along once again, if you missed it earlier, Mountain Cedars in the high category is 4,690. We posted this earlier on on Facebook and Twitter and a lot of people were not happy, uh, but that's where we sit. Molds are low at 280. And looking at the wind gusts, this is kind of the big story today. We've got some gusty winds here, 20 to 25, but look at some of these gusts now being reported across the plains. Dodge City, Kansas, a gust of 77 miles per hour. A report near Pueblo of, of gusts over 90. And all of that wind uh, moving across the country here, likely kicking up some dust there in places like North Texas and Oklahoma. So a uh, storm system moving across th that will uh, bring a front into North Texas and then we'll have another one behind that that will bring that colder air this weekend. And we'll take a look at that forecast coming up in just a bit. But in the meantime, 80 degrees today, mostly cloudy skies and southerly winds here at 10 to 15 miles per hour. Guys. Thank you, Justin. A woman turning iconic buildings into edible works of art. How she uses cookies as the building blocks still ahead. And so many tornadoes tearing through Kentucky and four other states over the weekend. The storm killing at least 88 people, ruining homes, downing power lines, cutting off people and families from key utilities. Now the effort to get folks back on their feet is underway. We are checking in with our KSAC community phone bank after the break. We're going to explain how you can help out. Well, by now, we've all seen those powerful images of the devastating damage left behind by the deadly tornadoes. Those tornadoes killing dozens in five states. Right now, survivors are left trying to meet basic needs. A lot of people don't have heat, don't have water, don't have electricity. One organization, we're going to help those people. That is the Red Cross, and that is why we're teaming up with them as part of the latest KSAC community event, a phone bank. So we're joined here with Jeremy from the Red Cross. So how does this all work? How can people help out? The best way to help out, oh, actually before that, a lot of people want to donate food. They want to donate supplies. The fastest, quickest, easiest way to do is to donate funds. Those funds allow us to go in and be able to purchase those because we have suppliers in place and give those items in need quickly. That's the easiest way to do it. Now with the phone bank, just in Studio B, you can see it right there. As Ursula said earlier, usually we're in there, you can hear the phones ringing. They're on the phones, which is a good sign, asking people to help out donate as much as possible. So what does the process look like? Do they just call, they talk? Great question. So the easiest thing to do is to call. We can take calls in English and Spanish. Easiest thing to do is just to offer up an opportunity to donate. And as Ursula was saying before, you can actually donate uh, for a friend for the holidays if needed. Perfect so the Christmas best thing present. to do is, let's say something as easy as $20. $20 can provide breakfast, lunch, and dinner for a single individual. $50 would be breakfast, lunch, and dinner plus shelter and $200 will do all that for a family of four. Okay, now you guys have food, shelter. What other needs are you supplying everyone? We also provide services, services to those people in, in need, you know, counseling services, um, blood donation services. And so the Red Cross is just there to help. At the end of the day, we want to be there to help. Okay, and what are the hours looking like right now? For us, mm -hmm. we're there 24-7. We do not leave. We do not leave until the last person is gone. Fantastic. And the number on your screen that you can call 210-351-1363. How long is this phone bank going on for? Uh, I believe till 7 p.m. today. Okay, so there you go. As little as $20 donation can help so many families. Absolutely. All right, Jeremy, thank you so much. Thank and the you. phone bank right there, as you see on your screen, open English and Spanish until 7 this evening. 210-351-1363. Looking outside with live cam. We might get a little glimpse of sun at some point today. Or might have been not? I think we'll get a little bit, but it, it, it's going to be hot nonetheless. Hot for Simmer Sanders anyways. Uh, 76 so far today. I think we'll be pushing 80 this afternoon. 69 was the low this morning. That's uh, pretty incredible because that's 27 degrees above the average low. The record low is 15. We weren't anywhere near that, obviously. It's set back in 19. We're actually above the 
we were above the average high temperature this morning. Just give you some perspective. More warmth on the way. Cold front this weekend. We have a few changes in that forecast. We'll show it to you coming up. Hello, everyone. This is your Daily Tech and Business Briefing from Cheddar News. Apple, now the target of a new investigation, this by the U.S. Labor Department. That over claims they retaliated against an employee. Reports say a former Apple engineer says she lost her job after she complained and publicly criticized the tech giant about workplace safety issues, and that includes harassment. Multiple federal agencies say Apple broke multiple laws concerning workers' rights and environmental conditions. Meanwhile, United Airlines anticipating their busiest schedule for the year, and despite emergence of the Omicron variant, the airline expects to carry 8 million people between December the 16th through January 3rd. That would top their average travel numbers from the past Thanksgiving holiday. And the Omicron variant is in the air, but Bumble CEO says love too is the buzz. Whitney Wolf says the dating app's business has remained largely unaffected by the emergence of the latest COVID variant. She doubled down saying people need love regardless of any restrictions that are in place and utilize the app to fulfill the needs for that connection. And that's your Cheddar News Business and Tech Update. I'm Baker Machado coming to you from Cheddar Studios in Lower Manhattan. If you've got family out of town, you know what I mean. Holiday travel sometimes can be a real chore. But if you're flying out of the San Antonio airport, there's a little quick pick-me-up in the form of some interesting art out there. That is right. Colorful murals brightening up the walls inside one of the airport parking garage. So in this week's If These Walls Could Talk, Katrina Weber shows us why they seem to be just for locals. and security checks can be drawbacks in getting away. To get into the right headspace for that hustle and bustle, passengers at San Antonio International actually may enjoy staring at some of the walls. We have uh, six different artists that created five different concepts that were all highly unique. With the help of San Antonio Street Art Initiative, the airport took its long-term parking structure to a whole new level back in 2019. They actually put murals on every level at both elevator bays. The artwork was part of a marketing plan aimed at local travelers. Uh, we were coming out of summer travel and looking towards holiday travel of that year and wanting to remind people that we have a very convenient and easily accessible long-term parking garage. Matt Evans says putting the art on the walls wasn't exactly easy. There were lots of logistics involved, such as painting only at night when traffic died down and preparing the painting surface. All told, though, it took only about two weeks. The truth is, the painting portion of this, I think, happened in two or three nights. Each one of these pieces includes a salute to San Antonio in some form or fashion. Check out her hair. It's shaped like the Alamo. From tiny details to a giant concha, they're all symbols that locals love in a place used by us. Folks can remember after a week away on vacation, hey, I think we parked, was it level two or level three? I can't remember, but we definitely had a big conch on the way out. They're murals that are designed to be memorable in more ways than one. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. It's almost worth paying for parking just to go look at it. That is so good. Hey, where do we park? By the giant concha. Yeah. That makes sense. The lady with the flowers. In yes. There. And you know what? The Alamo with the Phenomenal. Very, very well thought out. And, you know, so many people did not travel in 2019 and 2020 after the, this artwork went up. So it is kind of a found piece of art. Absolutely. Great story. All right. Another story today is the weather, Justin Horn. 75 degrees. Mm, so warm. And uh, a lot of people have been asking, what about Christmas? How's it looking? Well, it's still too early to say. We don't have any, uh, you know, definitive information yet. But we do have a general idea as we look at the overall weather weather pattern. As we look down the line, we're thinking warmer than average. I know that's a surprise. No right? snow for Christmas. Uh, probably not. Probably not. Uh, let's look at the graphic here, and we'll show you that the December 23rd to December 29th. Now, this is a generalization, but we think that it'll be above average. Those red colors indicate above average. If you were to see blue there, it would be below average. But most of Texas, it looks, is going to stay fairly warm through the Christmas holiday. Now, we will get some periodic cool downs with some fronts, but nothing that's going to be terribly cold, or at least so it looks right now. And uh, we do have a couple showers on the radar. We got to show you that uh, moving through the area. These are light. We saw some of this activity yesterday. 
Very quick moving light showers generally east of San Antonio, although we are seeing a few light returns here in town. So don't be surprised if you get a, a quick uh, little shower as everything is tracking uh, south to north at this point. Going outside for you, we've got mostly cloudy skies, 76. Southerly winds at about 11 miles per hour. Dew point is way up there. It is extremely sticky. And you see all the clouds. Now, some of these are breaking up, and we will get some peaks of sun today. Some high clouds on top of the morning low clouds. And so we'll call it mostly cloudy. That's the general idea here. 81 Carrizo Springs, 83 in Catula, 74 Kerrville, 73 in Fredericksburg. And those dew points, as we showed you, uh, just not very December like at all. Upper 60s, close to 70. That is extremely muggy. Forecast for today will be up around 80 this afternoon. Temperatures won't fall off much tonight. Southerly winds 10 to 15 miles per hour. We could see some more drizzle, maybe a little bit of fog tomorrow. But one of the reasons we didn't get a lot of fog this morning was because we had strong enough winds. And when winds are strong enough, you typically won't get the fog formation. And you look across the state, man, we've got some really strong winds right now. Gusting to 51 in Abilene, gusting to 40 in Lubbock, 63 in Amarillo. You go north, numbers are even worse. Gusting to 70 right now in Dodge City, Kansas, as the storm system comes across the country. Now, our winds will not be this strong, but we could get some gusts 20 to 25 today. High wind warnings are in effect for good reason across the middle part of the country, but it's stretching from New Mexico all the way up to the Great Lakes. You don't see that very often. Strong winds for a large portion of the country and then some winter weather advisories on the back side of that. As you look at the, uh, the radar and satellite here over that area I just showed you, it looks like we're picking up on some, maybe some dust being kicked up too. So there's probably some dust traveling across the plains with winds like that. That's caused by that storm system that uh, right now is over Denver. That'll move east. That'll drop a front into North Texas, but not all the way through here. It's the system behind that that will push a front through for us and get us some cooler weather and maybe some rain by the weekend. This is Thursday at 5 p.m. There's that front stalling out. Here comes the next system. Uh, Friday afternoon, still warm, but by Saturday morning, here comes the front. A broken line of showers and storms along the front. That pushes south towards the coast. We may get a little bit of a break Saturday afternoon, and then some upper level energy comes in from the west that kicks off more showers on Sunday. Stays cool, stays cloudy, and by Monday, this is moving out when we start the warm up process. Here's how it looks on the seven day forecast basically 80 next few days. That cold front comes in, 60% chance of rain, gusty winds, 50s on Saturday, and then 52 Sunday, 40% chance of rain, and then a warm up next week. We'll be right back. From candy canes to Christmas cookies, it's officially the time to start celebrating all things filled with sugar. That's right, but one woman in New York, she's made a name for herself, not just for her baking abilities, but for her architecture skills in the kitchen. Here's ABC's Will Gans with more. Buddy the Elf's not the only one working overtime this time of year. The Shake Shack took me about 50 hours in total, and I would say uh, that's probably about the same for the cottage and Rosebud probably took more than that because it was just so much bigger. I mean, that's a full work week. Like, yeah, I was doing it like nights, weekends. <laughs> <laughs> By day, Natalie Salerno works in marketing, but her holiday hustle, making gingerbread recreations of your favorite real life buildings. Like the cottage from Nancy Myers, the holiday. Nancy Myers DM'd me after the holiday and I died a little bit. Natalie leaning into her sugary sweet skill set during the pandemic, quickly taking on gingerbread construction jobs on a much larger scale, like the Rosebud Motel from this show. But she's making it look easy with her latest cookie creation, a miniature version of the first ever Shake Shack. Give me one second. I have cookies in the oven, and I that's like not a joke. We'll I take care. Okay, of course. I need to take them out. <laughs> I promise I didn't stage that. <laughs> With fresh baked cookies on the brain, we had to ask. Are you able to eat anything that you make? Um, I don't, but you can. It keeps me from being too precious about things because at the end of the day, like something could be going wrong and I have to remind myself, this is a cookie, like it's okay. Everything will be okay. It is uh, not gonna last forever. And there's something kind of beautiful about that. So what does Natalie have up her sleeve for next Christmas? She's hoping to keep the Nancy Myers tradition going with a gingerbread recreation of the house from Father of the Bride. How about that? Will Gans, ABC News, New York.
That is impressive. That is. That she has the time to do it. Yeah. Too at Christmas time. I could see that kind of stuff on SA Love. Yeah. Yeah. And speaking of which, it is a wild Wednesday on SA Love. Oh, oh yes, indeed. But it, it sure is. It's Hump Day. Yes, indeed. <laughs> and You'll it's also in a second. day number ten of the twelve days giveaway. Ten prizes you can win today. That's right. Whoever yep. wins today gets today's prize and the previous nine. So stick around to find out more about that. Speaking of Hump Day, <laughs> oh, we're living up to that. it. <laughs> All right, we've got Klaus the Camel here from Animal World and Snake Farm. We are going to introduce you to him and talk about all the fun they're going to have at their Christmas event and how you can join in. And those gingerbread houses you just saw, oh, they've got nothing on Amherst Garcia from Glamorous Cakes. How are you? So good to see you. Look at that beautiful work of art there. <laughs> However, if you have been bad, you get a lump of coal, right? Yes. Okay, so we're gonna do a lump of coal like this. So we have our naughty coal sets. We're just gonna pipe the black frosting over. My piping bag broke. Uh oh. Oh no. Wow, okay, so that, Mine is how to do it. <laughs> You're gonna have to watch the real coal. thing happen in a few minutes. <laughs> All right. Hey, you want a great recipe? Me and A. Rodriguez, and you know she can do just about anything in a uh, crock pot. There is making a wonderful, wonderful salad. Yes, a Tex-Mex inspired ensalada de noche buena. And big toy drive over there, Joyride, and we're going to tell you all about that. It is free, but you got to bring a toy. Plus, favorite Christmas song? Oh, I love it when we break into song. Let us know what your favorite Christmas song is at SA Live KSAT on Facebook and Twitter. Jingle Continue bells, in a few minutes. Jingle bells, jingle bells. <laughs>